This could, could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says, <laughs> Oh, if the former leader thinks those folks who stormed the Congress on January 6th were loving people, then he needs psychiatric care. And hell, I'm not a psychiatrist. What do I know? I'm just a rubber chicken. Well, yes, you are. You certainly are. But you certainly know a lot about psychiatry, and you've got something to say. And this certainly upset you, didn't it? Well, I understand that. But we haven't got time because it's time for Lewis Black's Rantcast, number 51, entitled, We Are the Variant. Oh, yes, siri, Bob. And it's coming through now like a freight train because we haven't got any fucking common sense at all. At all. We've got a leadership that doesn't want to lead. And I'm talking about these folks in Congress who are talking about the fact they're people who are actually fucking elected to Congress. And I'm not going to go through their names because I'm tired. They don't even like like certain people who are criminals or do things that are just wrong. I'm, I'm sick of giving them any fucking mention anymore. And they're, they're folks I'd never heard. Of. I don't think that um, the American people know what they're doing. So I certainly don't need to be leading them. Uh, yeah, that's what you do. Um, what part of the, the uh, resume, what part of the the uh, what part of the goddamn job description did you miss? Huh? What, what did you think you got elected to Congress for? You got elected to lead. That's the deal. God damn it. And I'll repeat it time and again and time and fucking again. All right. Did you not work in student government? Huh? I worked on a prom committee. Yeah, I did. I worked on my junior prom. I was a leader. I led them into to, to creating a prom that would be so cheap that we would be able in, a, in a, it was a junior prom. And it would be so cheap that we would then be able to have a senior prom that was free. Huh? That's leadership. Nothing major, but you know, but that's what you're supposed to do. And you're not going to, you're not going to lead. I don't think that I have to tell you whether I got a vaccination or not. It would be nice. Yeah. It'd be important. Okay. Because we got a variant going like a freight train up our ass, you idiots. And get on it, please. There's a, almost half of the Republicans in Congress won't admit whether they were vaccinated. What are you? If it, this isn't like the the goddamn fucking. I'm a. I'm a. What are you? Are you? You know. What are you? This is your your brain on steroids that you're showing how strong you are. You fucking stop jerking everybody off. Okay, we don't have time. All right. This is nonsense. Freedoms. Okay. Bullshit. It's bullshit. It's health. It's got nothing to do with freedom anymore. All right. You kind of muddled your way through it. And it's not got anything to do with goddamn freedom. It has to do with health, the health of everyone. I went and saw my mother this week. Okay. And, and, um, they have been in a, in a critical situation in their, in the, the assisted living and an independent living and, um, and also the, uh, the those who are in the uh, I forget what they call it, where it's uh, uh, the you know, it's the the um, Alzheimer's and the, um, there's another name for it for the folks who are in uh, dementia, uh, you know, the memory unit. And they had to go back into lockdown. One wouldn't think at this point in time in, in, in for that group that's the most vulnerable that we haven't learned the fucking lesson. But apparently there was a caregiver there who, it turns out, um, has COVID. That's right. Huh? Because you won't lead. Right? You know, you know, I'm not responsible. Yes, you are. Uh-huh. And hopefully if there's a God in heaven, he will sit your ass down and you'll have to listen to a lecture for eternity. Because this is ridiculous. Put my mother at risk. Put all of them at risk. Again, she's 102, surviving by having to stay inside the whole time. Now, and, and, and just finally kind of getting out. They still don't have, because they're rebuilding there, they've been doing a renovation, because that's what we really want to do after folks get out of a goddamn fuck, unbefucking leaveable. Do I sound like I'm losing my mind? Yeah, I'm losing my mind, because it's appalling. 
that they would renovate after really a pandemic. It's extraordinary to me. It's unbelievable. So they they haven't been able to go into certain places. Then they finally uh, could go downstairs and uh, eat together. Uh, the folks who were taking care of my mother, an incredible group of, of women who do an extraordinary job, by the way. I can't thank them enough. Have, have, have waited and waited and waited to be sure everything was okay. And thank God they did, because now that's shut down. Because they don't know, because these, they don't, I don't even think they have a, a, a trace on, on contact tracing on this thing. Uh, on, on where it came, on, on who this uh, the caregiver came in touch with. Thank my mother's in a different unit. She's in an independent living unit where they've lived way beyond what anybody expected, and um, and she's you know all, for those of you who are asking, yes, she's doing well. Uh, I mean, all things considered, it's uh, unbelievable. And uh, but it is uh, how how is it possible? That someone comes in, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I don't agree. If, if somebody thinks, well, you don't have to be vaccinated to, to work in, uh, in that type of environment. I think you do. I think when it comes to our most vulnerable, you have to be able to say, yes, you should be uh, vaccinated. And we're reaching that point where um, I believe in terms of us moving ahead as a country and in terms of our health and well-being, uh, and our mental health, because mine is like, I feel like my cage is being rattled every fucking day. I turn that TV on and, and, there's, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going through it again. It's like being on a bad fucking roller coaster ride. And all of a sudden we, the, we came around the corner and now we're all upside down again, wondering if the, if the goddamn fucking, if they're going to get there in time before the blood rushes to our head and we pass out. Maybe it's biblical. Maybe that's what this is. Huh? You know, I'm, I'm certainly not one to, uh, to be your biblical guy, but maybe that's what this is. All of it. You know, it's, it's not climate change. It's, 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 it's God saying, hey, you fucked up and enough is fucking enough. All right. And now you've you got a whole group of people that you've you elected this whole group of nasties and, and and in other countries, idiots have been elected and shit is going on in in China and elsewhere. And and God looked down and said, I'm fucking sick of it. So I'm gonna poke you here and here and here. And maybe it's time there's a new book of the Bible. And it should be called what should it be called? Okay? You got two major ones, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And now the, uh, the next estimate, which should be called, what the fuck? Huh? That maybe should be the name of the next Bible. And I've, I'm, I'm a little freaked because I got a, a, sh a show coming up in a few days. And uh, it'll be my first show. And it's really starting to stress me out. It's like, it's like when uh, I, and listen to that siren in the background. Who could be coming for me for all I know. He's yelling too loud. Some of those who live in the building have decided it's time to take him away. He Once a week, he's in that room screaming like a banshee. I think he's lost his mind. Well, I certainly have come close because the stress of this is like when I used to have to take those fucking tests that would go on forever. And it was like, and my mother, it was really important that I'd come home with that A or boy, oh boy, there'd be hell to pay. So uh, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm heading into Monday night show. I need an A. And my brain looks at the notes. And seriously, I pick it up. I look, I look, I look. And my brain goes, uh, no, no, Lewis. We don't care. We haven't been doing anything, have we? We, can, we have not been concentrating enough for us to be able to focus. Now, I might as well be sitting with the paper like this. Might as well put it against my head. And, and then like the people who say that uh, maybe that'll work as well. You know, that's like people who say that they're magnetized so that the from the vaccine. That's why they're not getting the vaccine. Maybe, maybe that that's what, what, maybe this is what I, you know, I can memorize this way. Wouldn't that be fun? And then I could say when I didn't, I could go on stage and I could go, I've been trying to memorize it this week. And I was told, I read on, on Facebook and Instagram that if I put the paper to my head, uh, that I would be able to memorize. And God, I'm really sorry. I just wasn't able to. So there'll be no show tonight. Hasn't worked out. Um, and I've got a lot of metal stuck to my chest and made it hard to sleep. And I would like to say, you know, we're moving along, but we're not. 
You know, we've got, uh, we, we want to have this January 6th commission. Uh, we need to have a January 6th commission. I still say we should have done it. If they're not going to do it there, pick people who everyone respects, do it independently. Why we don't do it that way, I don't know. Nobody, because nobody calls me. Nobody calls me. No one cares. <laughs> Why would they call me? I'm busy. I'm busy trying to memorize. Nobody's calling. But it would seem to me, uh, you know, that they, uh, it, it's true. They, you know, the Republicans had the opportunity to do this. I mean, why wouldn't you? Because they're going to make it into fuck you. You've got, it's, don't say what they're going to do. Wait until they do it. All right? We're playing in it. Don't fucking make shit up so you can walk away. You wouldn't take that from your kid. All right? I'm not going to go to that class because I know what they're up to at that class. That teacher hates me. They're going to flunk me. So I'm not going to take Algebra 1. Fuck you and your attitude. Go in there. And then if they do it, do, do one better. If they do something that's really off the charts, you know, way back is when you should have done it. Should have done it when the Senate and voted for it and done it and created this thing. And, 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 and then if they really pulled the, 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 something stupid, then walk away. And then you had something to fucking stand on instead of this goddamn nonsense. Send in Jim Jordan, please. Who is, you know, been useless in terms of this. You yell about the, the, the political nature of Nancy Pelosi, which you have a right to yell about. I get it. Of course. But there's the quality of that political nature, all right, of which all sides, both sides in their, you know, even again, Liz Cheney has a political nature, all right? But she's very conservative to the point that her votes, I look at her votes, they give me agita because they go so far the other way. I'm, I'm in the middle for all of those of you who think, boy, it's out there, like, uh-uh. I'm just trying to get us to the fucking middle so that shit gets done. What's the middle? A road that's rebuilt. All right? That you don't argue over. That you fucking get it built. Okay? And it's not 21% in terms of a tax. God damn it, it's the same shit over and over and over again, which is why uh, this, this, this week will be short. It's all that's been happening is the same shit. You know? Over, fuck, over, fuck, over again. It'd be Jim Jordan and this guy Banks, who says it's you know we do this for you know all this is going to be is a is a grandstanding for for leftist authoritarianism. Fuck you, least authoritarian people on earth. They they try to be, you know, if in the best of you know, but they they might pull it off in in certain ways. They might pull it off in a, in in a, in certain very liberal campuses. You might see that type of, uh, you know, um, type of uh, authoritarianism, God, we're, you know, that the thing that you you yell about this cancel culture stuff, of which some of it is really over the top, but God, authoritarian, both sides have it. Okay, you, you know, you're, you're doing what you're doing, Mr. Banks, because you had a, 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 the, the leader that you want and the leader that you're following is an authoritarian, okay? So the right has the authoritarians, the left, the far left has authoritarians. That's it. Okay, so grow up and deal with fucking reality and stop whining. And stop making shit up before it happens. Okay? That's fucking, that's, you know what that is? That's, as, as the chicken would say, that's, that's, that's second grade psychology. All right? Even somebody who's in the second grade learning the first the rudiments of psychology says you, you don't fucking anticipate shit. I do it all the time, though, but I keep it to myself. Occasionally, I share it with some of my pals, and they go, what the fuck's the matter with you? And that's what's going on here. You know, that's what's up. Wow. And for you folks out there, um, Stop with the disinformation. And I think people who spread disinformation about a vaccine should be arrested. OK, we don't have time. All right. I, how? How? You know, no, you don't get to pull this shit. You don't get to make shit up. Your leader 
the one you want was vaccinated. Okay? So how tough is it for you to get vaccinated? How many people do you need to see dropping like flies in front of you? How many of your children do you need to see? They all went to that Christian camp and came back and boy, oh boy, they, and, uh, and there was an epidemic. I think it was, I'm not sure, Mississippi or Alabama. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just, it, 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 what matters is, is those kids. That's what matters. It's unbelievable to expose children to this, to expose children to the fact that, that we don't know how, that, you know, that we're not going to be adults, that there's a group of us who are adults who are not going to act like adults. It's beyond disturbing. It, it just really is. And then I'm leaving the little place that New York, which is kind of safe. No, that's not what you think. That's, uh, that's another problem I have. That's my underlying condition. <laughs> which I'll be talking about in my new show, which begins on Monday. On Monday! Tick, 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 tick. God. It's like, it's literally as if algae or moss has been growing for the last 16 months on portions of my brain, all right? I have not plowed the fields back there, and they are suffering. The wheat won't grow. The wheat won't grow. And, uh, but it's really uh, a time for us to, to really uh, get our shit together. I don't want to spend the next year um, wondering if we're, uh, if we're going to move forward. I want to see people f- fucking wake up. How many, how many more do you, how many you got to bury? I mean, it's and it's the rest of the world, you know, the variant's a real thing. OK, it's not kidding around. It's there. It's happening and it's killing people. And it's and it's coming after folks who uh, have the vaccine. And and for those of you out there, oh, let's join that. Those if, if you were vaccinated. From everything I've read, and God knows I follow this like a psychotic, and they don't say it enough when they go, there's been a breakthrough infection, and they don't follow it up enough quickly with the fact that it was either um, asymptomatic or a mild, it was a mild infection. These people were not hospitalized. The people in Texas, were they hospitalized? I don't think so. I don't think they were hospitalized. All right. It's terrible that it happened to them. Um, And who knows if they got it there or on the plane? I don't know. No one knows. Um, But it's, um, but it is, you are, if they, if you, if you take the vaccine, it is known that when you're with another person who is vaccinated and the others around are vaccinated, there's no reason for you to wear a mask and have your freedom taken away. And you can act like we normally used to act, you know, and have fun and be able to enjoy ourselves in our lives. And um, for those of you thinking of moving to Canada, because we're going to be able to uh, finally, I think it's August 9th, um, you're not going to want to move to uh, Vancouver, which apparently... uh, was, but I didn't realize still, one of the most expensive places in North America to live, a 160 square foot uh, micro studio was advertised, a micro studio, uh, advertised for $500 a month. And it was revealed to be a bathroom with a bed stuck in the corner, just feet from the toilet. This unit is ideal for a single individual, the landlord wrote. Who does not need much space? Wow. Or a kitchen, I guess, or anything. You may want to hop on that if you want to get out of the United States, because I'm sure nobody's bought that deal. And if they had, they um, should probably join the former leader and maybe spend time with our psychiatric chicken. (laughs) That's what I got from here. My mom says hi to everyone. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 
I'm kind of, uh, I've made that up a little, but she, uh, she said, uh, you know, one of the things she did say when I was there was uh, she gave me the opening line of my act, which I will not going to share, um, which actually fit in with the closing line of the act that I'd already written. But I, she, she did say, um, be sure and talk about me because they like me. And I'm glad she's conscious of that. I try to let her know that you guys uh, respond really well on Twitter to her. And uh, uh, actually, she gets more of a response than I do, and I'm thrilled with that. Uh, she was looking good, and uh, we had a, a lovely time together. I hope that uh, you enjoy uh, this rant cast as much as I uh, enjoyed reading uh, these rants. It was, uh, there's some, there's once again, uh, you always uh, amaze me, and it is always a pleasure uh, to be your mouthpiece. And, uh, and hopefully we can continue this uh, as the uh, year continues to roll out. And uh, after um, probably, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to take a break next week or the week after, but you'll be the first to know. And I hope uh, you have a, a lovely week and that all goes well. And that if you know someone who hasn't gotten vaccinated, try to spend the time uh, if you can. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good at this. I have no patience. Um, you know, trying to lead them, lead them to getting a, a vaccine. OK, because uh, it's too important. You know, the whole world is watching. And if we don't want the vaccines, maybe we should give it to other people and then and then uh, we'll find a country where they actually get to the point where they have a herd immunity. And then uh, those of us who are interested in that could move there. And that'd be fun, too. Wishing you nothing but the best. Always a pleasure to spend time with you. Thanks. What makes you happy? Is there something that interferes with your happiness or prevents you from achieving your goals? There certainly was with me a whole list. And I've been working on it for years with a wonderful professional therapist. Is your mental health something you'd like to work on? Well, that's why I want to talk to you again about one of my sponsors, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online counseling service that assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling in a convenient and private online environment. You log on to the website and can start communicating with someone in less than 48 hours. They pair you with a counselor that you can message whenever you'd like, and you will get timely and thoughtful responses. You can also schedule weekly video or phone sessions from home without having to travel. They work with licensed professionals to match you with someone that works for you. So whether it be stress, anxiety, sleep, trauma, anger, family conflicts, grief, relationships, LGBTQ matters, or self-esteem, BetterHelp is committed to helping you find the expertise you need online without having to be limited by geographic location. They offer financial aid, make it free and easy to change counselors if need be, and it's confidential, convenient, professional, and more affordable than traditional offline counseling and I can vouch for that. Just go to their website to sign up and check out their daily testimonials. And if you're a counselor yourself, they are currently recruiting professionals in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp dot com slash rantcast join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health again that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash rantcast brit webwell shares this with us i see you're coming to jacksonville in december well december 18th actually for sure that's when i'll be there I better write to you now because I might be fucking dead before you get here. I've been comfortably working from home and staying healthy. Last week, employee communications emailed that I needed to return to the office by September 9th. Fucking employee communications needs to practice communicating with someone in Jacksonville 
who watches the news. All ER hospital rooms are filled with COVID patients. And those fortunate ones in the ER waiting room who do not have COVID, they are waiting 24 plus hours for a fucking doctor. Well, anyway, I message coworkers to find out who else got the return to office email. Fucking nobody. I'm the only one. I was told that only people who provided photo proof of getting a vaccine would get the back to office email. Of course I did that because I got vaccinated. God damn honesty sucks sometimes. Well, this doesn't sound like equal treatment to all employees. I'm going to call Morgan and Morgan and file a lawsuit. This is vaccination discrimination. And for you motherfuckers out there, I may even start a movement. Vaccinated lives matter. Maybe things will clear up by September 9th. Red. <laughs> who knows? Who the fuck knows? Who knows? I'd be, I hope so, because I'm going to be rolling in there to perform. And, uh, and it'll be interesting. It'll, it won't have to worry about uh, social distancing, because if... If the folks uh, sit around the audience and uh, just, I never sell enough tickets there to worry about social distancing. They take, uh, you know, seats a, a, away from each other. It shouldn't be a problem at all. You know, I never, I just never sell enough tickets. So everybody should be comfortable there. Even you, right? If you're, if you're still around, I believe you'll still be around, but it is, what would you, how would you know? You had to be honest. You didn't know what the hell that meant. And you figured everybody else would be writing in. Maybe the other people didn't get vaccinated. <laughs> You're the only one in your office, which means eventually they'll all show up at some point after September. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. It makes me crazy. It makes me crazy. Good luck with it, Brett. Um, I hope it helped to share it. Amazon had some news recently, and Jack B. wanted to share his feelings about it because he knows of it firsthand. Hello, Lewis. I'm pissed off. I'm a college dropout who is plagued with terrible money management problems and a family history of poverty. Once I got laid off from my shitty retail job in March, I decided to work for Dr. Evil himself, Jeff Bezos, delivering precious packages to ungrateful rich fucks. These den schoons have shown me throughout this pandemic that real empathy comes from those who experience hardships in life. Coming from a very low income household and struggling financially myself gives me a special sort of fire in my belly when I see extremely wealthy douches forget that they have ordered the packages that I'm carrying up their mile long driveways in their gated communities. Ignoring the people, the job has only gotten worse throughout the pandemic. Since most businesses went remote over the past year, it's been increasingly difficult to find restrooms to relieve yourself in. The package count and our workload has also skyrocketed, as you might expect. This has led to many drivers pissing into bottles. Following this week, our gracious company will be adding near 360 degree cameras in the vans to monitor our every move while we drive. The cameras also talk to you. Oh, wow. I really? I, wow. I mean, that takes my breath away. They talk to you and remind you that when you yawn or take one hand off the wheel, you're a failure to the company and need to fix your driving. It's a mixture of a dystopian future slash driving with my mother nightmare that I'm not looking forward to. There's a silver lining, however. At least now, after 10 hours of delivering stainless steel water fountains for dogs to clueless, greedy cunts, I can sleep soundly at night, knowing that when I stick my below-average dick in a Gatorade bottle, to feel the sweet relief of piss, I will have an audience. Thank you. I really needed to get that off my chest. I'm sure you did, Jack. And you probably need to get more off your chest once they institute this. And I can't believe they are. 
And I can't imagine it's legitimate, but Jesus. Thanks for sharing that. I, I can start screaming. You've, you've sufficiently explained it. There's no need for me to go any further. Thank you, Jack. And good luck with that madness. I hope you, you can find your way out of the evil empire in a place where they, they're not filming you or you're pissing into a bottle. Ooh, I can't imagine. Not that I haven't done it. Not that I haven't done it. Tom Chambly is bitching about something that I have, and uh, he's doing it in a different fashion. I want the weatherman's job in Tampa. The motherfucker makes $300,000 for getting the weather wrong. There's no punchline to this travesty. Shit. Oh, yeah, the superintendent of the faux marvelous underachieving schools here makes $300,000 too. Double shit. I can't make a goddamn dollar as a prostitute. Where's the justice? You know, Tom, maybe you weren't cut out to be a prostitute. And if you really tried, I don't think you have. Maybe you could make a dollar. I mean, I understand. But look, we all made a mistake. Greatest gig on earth, you know, passed us all by. Except the smart ones. Weather person on TV, right? Just sit there. Read what's in the teleprompter. Don't move your eyes. Stay in front of a map, point at a couple of things. Come up with some jokes. Get some kids to be participatory with other people. Yeah, 300000 bucks. Show up at a couple of barbecues in the city. And I guess prostitution hasn't worked out. Maybe it's a shade of lipstick or something. And then, of course, what if you really are trying to be a prostitute? And I've really upset you and... Then I'll get all sorts of things about, well, how could you talk about the shade of lipstick? Well, because I'm sitting here by myself, right? There's no monitors around. No one to say, hey, you shouldn't have said that. Well, I'll find out soon enough. Hitting the road soon. Thanks for that, Tom. Mara McGuire has uh, sent in this about the great divide that tears us apart and can really, you know, get in the way of things you don't even think about, okay? You don't even think about it. It's how, how politics can fuck things up in a, in a way that well, I never imagined until I read this, Mara. Last week, I felt the need to do something normal, something relaxing. I have one real vanity. I've been coloring my hair for the past 20 years. Salt and pepper just doesn't fit me. So I went to for brownish red and I loved it. I've kept it that way ever since. My stylist and I are about as different as night and day, politics and all, but I figured I could live with that because she always did such a good job with my hair. Until now. I went in last week for my usual color job and didn't think twice about it until about halfway through when she suddenly started going on her own rant about how the Disney pedos are taking over school systems and the school board wouldn't take her dumbass Facebook meme about it seriously and how CRT, critical race theory, is, is the worst thing to ever happen, which is odd since our schools don't and never have taught it. It's taught in law schools, not in grade or high schools, but never mind that. They're everywhere. There's dozens on every block. We can't leave the house. Which is, of course, the biggest bunch of bullshit I think I've ever heard come out of a sentient being's mouth. It seems she not only took the deep dive into QAnon, she did several backflips along the way down. I zoned out. I can only tolerate so much brainwashed stupidity, after all. I arrived home and walked to the nearest mirror, and discovered to my horror that my hair wasn't brownish red, but black, but not just black, a, a dirty black with patches of the former color peeking through. I look like a, like a, a tortoise shell colored cat that's been dragged through a vat of used motor oil. Well, I found out when I asked around that the reason this was done to me without discussion or my permission is because red is QAnon's latest in a series of beyond bizarre lunacy. Red represents pedophilia. Oh, God. It, it, it. Lady, I don't 
give a shit what you believe or how utterly crazy you want to talk and act. Frankly, now, I don't give a shit if you fall off the face of the earth. It's, it's, if, if this kind of bullshit is how you want to live your life, cowering behind your door in fear of everything and everyone, swallowing the latest and greatest psychotic delusions the moment they hit social media, then by all means, dive deeper. But I'm not paying you for that. I'm paying you to color my hair brownish red, not whatever weird ass color your warped brain dreams up on the spot. And you're anti vax too. Well, come on down to Delta land then, because you see, my empathy ends where the lies begin. So when you end up with the virus again, because you're an idiot, just remember you chose. All this. Now, I'm off to try and fix the ruined wasteland of what was once a nice head of hair. It will eventually wear out, and I can get the right color and do it myself. In the meantime, I'll be reminded of my stylist brain dysfunction every time I look in the mirror. And she won't see my money again because my bullshit level is way over the top of my hip waders. For fuck's sake, doesn't anybody think anymore? And for the record, no, I haven't eaten any babies' faces, talked to any lizard people that don't exist, bowed to any avian overlords that also never existed, and I certainly haven't accused anyone of running a pedo ring out of the basement of a pizza parlor that doesn't have a basement. You think, as human beings, we'd be capable of telling the truth from what is gigantically, fantastically false. But no, apparently lunacy is all the rage these days. It certainly enrages me. Thanks, Lewis. Appreciate it. And by the way, I'm fully vaccinated because I'm not an idiot. Mara, I can't believe that, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's too much. It's too crazy. It's. It, I get, you know, all right, so you make shit up and then you, but I mean, it's one thing to have this philosophy, but then to kind of, to, 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 to bring it into the workplace and that red is the color of, how do you even decide that? And how are these people, I've, I've said this, I'm going to say it time and again, I'm going to repeat it for a long, long time because it's not going to go away. They're crazy. This is craziness. You make shit up and you, uh, decide what reality is, and then you decide to live in that reality, and, and you think that that reality is real, and it's not. And everybody who agrees on what reality basically is and has a sense of that um, uh, has to start kind of having to do something in terms of dealing with what is going on here. Uh, they used to. There were a whole group of people who believed in witches, and there were a whole group of people who knew that witches weren't real. And eventually, uh, they took, you know, the people who thought witches were real and went, uh-uh, you're fucking <laughs> kooky. Thanks for nailing it, Mara. Gerald DeLeonardo is righteously pissed off, and I think you'll see why. He gets to the point quickly. He's not screwing around. How about the politicians running on smaller government, less taxes, and term limits? They get money from the government that matches the percentage of money donated by citizens. And then they call you day and night for more donations. They get us to donate. Then our taxes match the donations. And then once you're on their donor list, they call you for more. What the fuck? Can't they do anything? What the fuck do we need them for? They can't even run for office without our money. Three times. And what do we get for it? Well, we got your rant, which made my day. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head, right smack on the head. Uh, uh, there's no reason for these people to be getting this kind of money. There's the, the, my, my inbox is massively uh, stacked with a gazillion emails. Why well, would we just send another? Where, boy, we were having a meeting today where our budget is, you know, fuck you. 
I'm overdone with it. And then when I try to get rid of them, if I get rid of one, you know, then it apparently goes to six other people who go, oh, well, we got rid of Schmobo. Then they sell it to, to uh, the other people. It's unbelievable. They should get a certain amount of money that, we put, that they get, you know, that we, we pay a tax and that they put in X amount if they want. They can put in to whatever they can put in, like to a certain amount. That's it. Everybody's limited to the same amount of money. None of this bullshit if you get fucking uh, fed by corporate fucking dollars. It's ludicrous. It's not tough to fucking put an end to that bullshit. Grow the fuck up. We got to grow up. These people, you know, we, they're wasting our time, our energy, our effort. And all they do is go back to continue to try to, to that's all they do is run. Maybe if we took away a ton of their money, they'd stop running so much actually do what they're supposed to do. That's the point I was getting at. And I thought you helped me get there. Thanks, Gerald. William Vernon had this to share with us. I have realized that we need to stop asking stupid people to get fucking vaccinated. They're stupid. Fuck them. Natural selection will fix it. Then only smart people will be left. America's IQ will jump 20 points at least. And since anti-mask... Vax dipshits are mostly Republicans. We might get some voting rights passed. I've been waiting to reveal my brilliant strategy for solving this matter until after all that stimulus money was spent. You see, I live on Hilton Head Island, and our businesses did great with all of that money coming in from all over this great land. What did you think stupid people would do with free stimulus money? Spend it at home? No, vacay, baby. We'll buy shit when we, can, when we get there, honey. So we thank them for that. They're so precious, you know. Too bad they might not get to come back. Well, that's it for now. The Tiki Hut opens soon. Beach, booze, and band. A man's got to have balance. Respectfully, William Vernon Hilton Head, South Carolina. Well, thank you. It's extraordinary what's going on out there. And I just watch it every day. And finally, and Fox News still, Sean Hannity comes through today or yesterday. So, you know, you really should get vaccinated. And then meanwhile, Laura Ingram has two Gorgons sitting next to her going, Oh, no, you don't need to get vaccinated because she will not get my breath here. I also heard today we're dropping, uh, we, we, uh, the life expectancy in this country is, uh, we, we live a year and a half less now. David Wood is irritated with human behavior, stupid human behavior, up north. I'm a Canadian, and though we are famed for our happy-go-lucky, forgiving, and accepting nature, and our ability to embrace people, no matter how different their lifestyle may be from our own, there's one group of people for whom I've lost all patience. I come to you in the Hope that hearing your melodic voice share my frustration may enable me to maintain my increasingly fragile patience a little while longer as we return to a life with more public visits. Okay, preamble complete. Allow me at last to reveal to you the people who make even this Canadian want to scream. The laneways and parking lots are for moving fucking cars. It is not for parking your car, no matter how quick you're going to be in the store, okay? It's not for waiting for someone to do their shopping, unless you're grabbing Nana on her way out the door. Fucking move, people! The parking lot is absolutely filled with places to keep your fucking car when you are not actively using it. Now, perhaps the issue is the actively using it part of this definition. A car is being used if it is moving, waiting to move, but unable to due to lights, signs, or people. Waiting for a spot you are sure someone is about to vacate and, as previously mentioned, grabbing Nana on her way out of the store or dropping her off. A car is not being used while you're inside because you left your kid or yappy dog or sad-looking husband occupying the passenger seat. And it certainly isn't being used because it's a sports car and people probably want to see it. It's not being used 
while your friend goes and stands in a line at McDonald's. So fucking park it. It's definitely not being used while you drop your crotch beams at daycare because it's easier to leave it in the lane. Lewis, when I see this, I am acting increasingly crazy. I've begun passive aggressively talking to the car on the way into the store saying, oh, it's too bad your owner drives like a fuckwit. I'm sorry you have to sit out here all embarrassed because your driver doesn't know how to fucking drive. But lately, I'm increasingly fantasizing about just plowing into one of these assholes and saying, I thought you'd be moving because this is a fucking road. People, please learn to park. I'm coming apart at the seams. I think it's deeper than that. <laughs> I think the issue may be deeper, but I love that. Maybe uh, get a sign on top of your car that says, move your ass, so you can drive through these places. And and maybe, uh, maybe, maybe somebody will pay for it. Thanks, David. Um, give my best to everybody up there. Here's a quick little ditty from Daryl Mouchel. To the person who wrote the code for these new trucks with all of this exhaust after treatment, I have something for them. Never have seen a diagnostic system that is worse at telling me, the driver, what's wrong than my wife when she's mad at me. When it has a problem, it has a diagnostic screen you can click on, to which it only says, see owner's manual. Now, if I ever find the person who wrote that part of the software, I'm going to find the largest dildo, paint C owner's manual on it, and shove it so far up their ass they choke on it. Then I'll take the owner's manual and beat them upside of the head with it and force the fucker to show me where in the owner's manual, which page I need to read to figure out how to fix this thing so I can actually get some work done. Boy, that's a problem we all face, Daryl. I got it. This, this fucking computer. Oh, yeah. You got a problem? And then it's, it's an Apple computer, so it doesn't do anything. It, the help thing just kind of giggles and goes and shows you little hearts or the, a spinning fucking spin wheel of colors, those colors, you know, pinwheel. Son of a bitch. You know, Microsoft doesn't do any better. It's fucking unbelievable. The phone, everything. So this is perfect. Just goes with it all. Thanks, Daryl. I can understand why you're pissed staring at that screen and then that fucking owner's manual. Congratulations. That'll that's really that's gonna that's gonna help us in terms of uh, you know climate ch- change problems. You know if they if they can't give the fucking instructions to you, Bruce Williamson has this to share with us. Lewis, my wife and I saw one of your final pre-pandemic shows at the end of February 2020 in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're happy to be in Chautauqua for your first post-vaccination show. No fucking thanks to the pea-brained assholes who think that knowledge in general and science in particular is a plot against them. If these people and the MAGA maniac at the head of their cult were around in the 1950s, people in this country would still be getting fucking polio. It's time to take off the gloves. No vaccinations? Okay, then. No travel in trains, ships, or airplanes. And, by the way, no in-person school for your children 12 and older, including college. Though why anyone in your shit-for-brains mindset who want to go to college is beyond me, lest I seem insensitive. If you have a genuine medical reason for not being vaccinated, we will accommodate you gladly, cheerfully. But if you are exercising your rights to help spread a deadly disease and endanger the health of all of us, especially children who are too young for a vaccine, well then, Do us all a favor and go fuck yourself. Well, Bruce, (laughs) I'll see you up in Chautauqua. It should be interesting. We're moments away. Actually, by the time this hits the air, I think, uh, yeah. By the time this hits the air, 
uh, that show will be over. And then uh, I'll have moved on to my new career. Uh, you know, uh, I'm <laughs> not sure what that would be. <laughs> Walmart greeter. No, that's not happening. Not in the midst of this madness. Bruce, thanks for that. A lot of people are pissed. It's just getting more and more inexcusable by the day. Really. Inexcusable. There are health care heroes. Let's see how much they can handle. Jim Grinstead uh, has sent in something that uh, really, uh, I think, covers the subject well. And hopefully we'll uh, bring some more folks out to, uh, to yell and scream about uh, what's going on in terms of the problem we've got. He's giving it a shot here, and I hope uh, I hope some of you other folks do. Thanks, Jim, by the way. Um, I must admit I'm not up to date on Rantcast. I just listened to episode 39 where gun advocates responded to your earlier comments, and I believe I can find common ground for both sides. Go fuck yourselves! Discussion of this hugely important issue should not be had from opposite sides of the universe. Do we really think those who want to get guns off the street are going to change gun advocates' minds? If so, I want some of the good shit they are smoking. And every time there's a mass shooting, people are going to be outraged and demand action. Even gun advocates don't like seeing the bodies of dead kids in the classroom. They know it's not right, but they're scared the government will take their guns away. It won't happen. Now, I'm a hardcore liberal. I wake up every morning and wave to Bernie Sanders, who is just to the right. I also grew up in a small rural town where guns were a way of life. I've lived in places where communities shut down for deer hunting seasons. I've met a lot of gun owners in my 66 years, and all but two have managed their guns safely using trigger locks or gun safes and storing ammunition away from the firearms. These people don't pose a threat. So why make them bear the burden? We need to wake the fuck up and realize the discussion should be about gun safety. The NRA was founded on safety, training, and learning gun skills, such as marksmanship. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it gives us all a healthy perspective on firearms. I realize facts have all been all but abandoned these days by fuckers who just want division, but let's float a few facts out there with something shiny attached to them, and maybe they'll pay attention. In 2019, using data from 2017, Pew Research found 60% of gun deaths were from suicide. That's 23,854 people. Now, some of these people would have found another way, but people who are smart about these things say if someone listens to their problems, cares about them, and is sympathetic, the person will likely change their mind in about 15 minutes. And yes, you fuck nuts on both sides. I know there won't always be someone around when a person tries to commit suicide, but we can find ways to lengthen the time it takes to get a weapon ready to fire. Hmm? Maybe send a text to a friend or family member when a gun safe is open or a trigger lock removed. It could have a two-factor identification like we do to keep our passwords safe. Maybe we can create a service where we can get a code to unlock the safe, but it takes 15 minutes before the code is sent. Yeah, it's a lot of hassle, but everyone gets to keep their guns, and we make it more difficult for people to act impulsively. Then there are those who need to grow a pair or deal with anger issues by saying delay is unreasonable if someone is breaking into your house. Well, dumb shit. The last thing you want is to confront someone who wants to hurt you. So if you're that worried, why don't you put bars over the windows, build tall gates, put in motion sensors, whatever the fuck it takes to keep criminals out of your house. Then you won't need a gun to protect yourself because they can't get to you. You'll be safe and not accidentally kill Aunt Sally, who's dropping off cookies for her grandchildren. At the risk of offending the overly emotional, I'm going to try again to offer facts and reason. In 1998, the National Institutes of Health did a study on firearms used for self-defense. I'll use their words about what they learned because they are small, and everyone should understand them. For every time a gun in the home was used in a self-defense or legally 
justifiable shooting, there were four unintentional shootings, seven criminal assaults or homicides, and 11 attempted or completed suicides. In other words, 22 people died from causes other than home invasion for every asshole who sees themselves as a hero for packing heat. The answer is better security, not more guns. That's just fucking obvious. Now, for those candy asses who feel their life is in danger anytime they peek out from under the covers, let's go back to the Pew study. We learned, if you idiots on both sides were paying attention, that 60% of the gun deaths are suicide. Murders account for 37%, and the final 3% came from other causes. 37% seems pretty fucking scary to me. Who are all these people killing each other? And why the hell don't we have Columbo, Jessica Flesher, and fucking Harry Bosch out there kicking ass? First, we need to know who these fucking murderers are and why they are doing it. Once again, I'll risk using facts, but unfortunately, those are scarce. One of the reasons is, is that Congress, in an effort to prove that they've not yet evolved from slime, voted in 1996 to effectively block the National Institutes of Health from studying gun violence. So why are people killing each other? The National Gang Center estimates about 13% of murders are gang related. A study by the Justice Department for the period between 1980 and 2008 shows 78% of homicides were committed by someone the victim knew. Gun-related deaths caused by an argument make up 60% of that group. So you're most likely to be killed by someone you know in the course of an argument. If alcohol's involved, things get worse. So why do all these dipshits think confiscating guns or hiding behind the Constitution will reduce gun deaths? It fucking won't. And we're having the wrong fucking discussion. To my friends on the left and my still rational friends on the right, plant your asses down at a table and find ways to slow down the time it takes to fire a gun. Give tempers a chance to cool. Give those contemplating suicide a chance to reconsider. No one will be completely happy and there will still be nut jobs who commit mass shootings, but we can stop the stuff that is killing most of us, and get rid of the asinine idea that we're all within moments of being killed by some random person. It's your family and friends who want you to shut the fuck up permanently. Now, my friends to the left are going to say, well, okay, but why do people need AK-47s? Look, I'm not a gun enthusiast, but I can imagine some people might want to know how it feels to shoot such a weapon or organize events that test and improve skills. Why does anyone need an Aston Martin, a V8 sports car that can reach 195 miles an hour? No one does. You can't peg that sucker during a drive to the office. You need a racetrack. That's what they're there for. You can enjoy the car safely. Hmm? So listen to me, you blind, stupid shitheads who are full of fear. What you say you want won't solve any problems. So sit the fuck down and come up with a gun safety plan. That's how you save lives, which is all we should be concerned about. Yeah, it is. And he gives, uh, he gives footnotes. Thanks for that, Jim. Well thought, well said. And I'm sure there'll be people reacting and flipping out. But uh, I like that idea of slowing people <laughs> You know, that the slowing down the time it takes to get a gun open, you know, to get a gun from from the where it is to, loaded. It's smart. And also, you know, that I've all well, you said it. I'm going to shut up. Thanks, Jim. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Ha ha, Lewis Black. It is produced by James Salkind. 
Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast. And most of all, thank you, all of you who ranted so well on this show.